The topic of neuroplasticity or brain retraining is pretty controversial in the MECFS world and at the moment there exist two very polarized camps those who are very pro brain retraining and those who are dead set against it. Now to my own mind this situation is not helpful and at some point we need to be able to talk about the potential usefulness of neuroplasticity in a more balanced way not making outlandish claims as can happen in the pro-brain retraining camp, but nor dismissing it altogether as happens in the anti-brain retraining camp. In today's video I'm going to talk about what might need to happen in order for the neuroplasticity narrative in MECFS to change. But first, my name is Patrick Usher and I'm author of the book Understanding MECFS and Strategies for Healing, in which I break down some of the latest, most exciting research into MECFS and long COVID, as well as talking about the various treatment strategies that I have tried as an MECFS patient to improve my quality of life. Links for that book are down below. So when I look at the brain retraining landscape in MECFS, we see two very, very different points of view. And one of them, the, the pro-brain retraining camp, has a range of typical talking points are typical things that are repeated by most brain retraining programs, not all, but most of them. And they include, for example, uh, the idea that MECFS is only a hypersensitive nervous system. All of the symptoms, no matter what your severity, are being created by the hypersensitive brain. Um, that post-exertional malaise is only created by the brain. And all you need to do is rewire your brain, recondition, and you should be fine. Now, I have done a range of videos before in which I try to debunk these claims. I believe them to be profoundly misguided and even dangerous at times. And so when I look at the pro-brain retraining camp, I see, first of all, these very limited views, which are you know, directly ignoring pretty much all of the research into these illnesses. And I also see an unwillingness to question why it is that some people might practice brain retraining and not actually make any or much progress. We tend to see, you know, in that kind of YouTube ecosphere, or whatever you want to call it, is we just see people who recover. We don't see the stories of people who practice the brain retraining very diligently, just make a bit of progress. We don't see those who do it according to the letter of the program they're following, but actually they don't make any progress. Or the people who sometimes do these things and actually get worse. And that's because this does not prioritize truth first and foremost. For to prioritize truth first and foremost, you would have to ask questions like, how can brain retraining, how does it relate to what we know about MECFS, the biomedical findings identified by the research? You can't claim simultaneously that MECFS is only a hypersensitive nervous system and ignore the over 10,000 research papers which show that actually a lot of other things are going on too. Similarly, if we're interested in truth first and foremost, and not in just making profit, we have to ask why it is that some people do these programs and don't recover or just make a little bit of progress. What is it about how MECFS manifests and the various burdens that develop because of it that means that some people do recover using brain retraining and other people don't at all? So again, these kinds of questions are not being asked. To be more cynical about it, I think that Part of the reason why those questions are not being asked can be explained by the famous quote from Upton Sinclair, it is difficult for someone to understand something if their salary depends upon them not understanding it. And unfortunately, the situation seems to be that if a lot of these people kind of have these brain retraining programs and who are all kind of repeating these sorts of ideas, if they were to actually think about neuroplasticity far more objectively, they'd have to rewrite their programs. And that ain't good for business, basically. So that's the first camp. There's kind of groupthink going on. There's ignoring of, of important evidence. And there's not an attitude of truth seeking, of actually trying to say, we know MECFS involves X, Y, and Z. How can that actually relate to the neuroplasticity stuff? And also there's a lack of curiosity around the varied responses that patients have in relation to uh, using brain retraining. When we come to the second camp, unfortunately here as well, there is also a lack of truth seeking. Instead, we have a range of kind of groupthink and repeated talking points to dismiss any discussion 
of neuroplasticity and its potential usefulness for MECFS. There are, you know, online forums. The very topic of neuroplasticity is banned. You can't talk about it. And this doesn't help anyone. You know, what it shows is is a lack of interest in what actually happens. If an MECFS patient wants to go along to a forum and talk about their experience with neuroplasticity and to, for example, say, you know, it helped me with my chemical sensitivity. Uh, I don't have that anymore. Uh, It helped me with my light sensitivity. I don't have that anymore. My my quality of life is better. We should not be in a situation where that person is just blocked. Their experience matters. We shouldn't feel threatened by it. We should be interested in what helps people no matter what the source. And so instead we have this, you know, shut it down, don't want to hear about it, um, you know, kind of attitude, then the kind of groupthink talking points to kind of bat away this sort of evidence. So for example, people will say, oh, you never had ME-CFS in the first place, did you? We don't know if you had ME-CFS. So they will actually invalidate. They will dismiss, um, you know, out of hand. Even if this person is describing all the typical ME-CFS symptoms, you know, it couldn't be anything else. um, And they just say, no, sorry, you probably didn't have it. And what they're doing there is ironically dismissing the lived experience of ME-CFS patients in exactly the same way as the doctor who dismisses the symptoms of the MECFS patient and says it's all in their head. So when we're acting like that as MECFS patients, we're actually doing that to ourselves. So there's a lack of interest in this camp in the stories of people who actually improve or recover. And those stories should not be off the table because we need to think about why that happens. We need to ask the question, you know, courageously and objectively, why do some people who use brain retraining recover from MECFS? What can explain that beyond just dismissing it by saying they never had it in the first place? Similarly, there seems to be this bizarre dismissal of even like not just the people's experience with neuroplasticity, but a dismissal of like even considering its potential usefulness. I mean, neuroplasticity is scientific. The brain does change in response to experience uh, and certain exercises that you can do. Like this is not controversial. And we know that neuroplasticity is used in other health issues. For example, with recovery after stroke, people can sometimes regain the use of limbs by using neuroplasticity. People can use neuroplasticity for other problems like obsessive compulsive disorder or attention deficit. There's a whole range of things that neuroplasticity can help with. And books like uh, The Brain That Changes Itself by Norman Deutsch, these show us that neuroplasticity is the real deal. So why don't we actually think about, or why, why are we not even allowed to, to voice how it is that neuroplasticity might potentially help MECFS, given the fact that we know the brain is involved, we know the autonomic nervous system is dysregulated, we know that there are certain changes that have been found in the MECFS brain. So are we not even allowed to ask what could happen? What could we do to perhaps influence those changes? into more positive directions and to think about how those changes might potentially help the overall health of the patient. Unfortunately, seemingly not. So at the moment, as I say, we have these two camps. Both of them have certain talking points. Uh, There are certain things you cannot say. There are certain things you cannot share in both of them. And this situation is not helpful. It's got to change at some point. At some point, we have got to be able to ask in a more objective way, what's going on? Why do some people recover? Why do some people not recover? Why do some people only improve a little bit? You know, what neuroplasticity exercises could help with the MECFS brain, given how it is? How might this fit into the overall pathophysiology? Because guess what? There ain't a single researcher in in the MECFS field which does not acknowledge that the nervous system is involved, that there is dysautonomia. So actually, this should be an area that we are considering much more actively. The problem at the moment is that the way these two camps have set themselves up is that it's very hard to talk about. So how can all of this change? Well, in my view, the most important thing is that some MECFS researchers, established ones, could join forces with experts in neuroplasticity, by which I mean scientists who work in this area, and start asking questions. Start saying, we know this is happening from brain scans. What exercises could we give MECFS patients to influence their brain in a better direction? So 
We need the experts to step in. We need them to develop programs. We need them to, to develop science-based protocols with actual MRI scans of MECFS brains before and after, you know, a neuroplasticity intervention that they might develop. Unfortunately, researchers don't really want to go to this area precisely because it has a very bad reputation as a result of the, um, essentially what I've been talking about so far, the pro-brain retraining camp comes out with such outlandish statements that I, will, I don't blame researchers from kind of not going near this area. You know, when, they, when they hear someone saying that post-exertional malaise is only created by the brain, I mean, are you kidding me? Like, when someone's saying something like that, and, and you're a researcher, would you take that seriously? No, you wouldn't. And so the problem is that at the moment, this area has been monopolized by people who are coming out with ludicrous claims. And then on top of that, the other camp, the anti-brain retraining camp, is simply responding to the first camp. It's not, you know, it, it's just dismissing it all out of hand. It's, it's, not, it's not curious about why pe some people get better. It's basically, because it's responding so strongly to the first camp, it is creating another force within the MECFS world to avoid going near the whole topic of neuroplasticity altogether. And so as a result of all of that, this is not an area that has been touched with the barge pole by MECFS researchers. Now, sometimes there are, there are some exceptions um, to that in a way where people are looking at the role that certain brain stimulation or vagus nerve stimulation devices can use. And that's great but it's not really the same as the self-directed neuroplasticity where you're actually doing the exercises yourself. So at the moment, we're at this kind of loggerheads situation. You can't really talk about it uh, with both camps. You can't approach it in a more objective way. And ultimately, this has to change. People have to be allowed to have opinions. They have to be allowed to debate. Uh, we need to move away from groupthink. I find it very boring, you know, looking at this landscape because both camps repeat the same talking points over and over and that gets us nowhere absolutely nowhere we need to change the discourse we need to ask different questions and hopefully hopefully at some point this could actually be an area that would be of interest to researchers we can actually get science-backed programs with a realistic expectation of how they might help patients and you know take this area out of the hands of people who make outlandish claims but also take it away from people who want to stifle any discussion of neuroplasticity whatsoever. You know, think about how ridiculous it would be if a stroke patient who'd managed to regain the use of a limb as a result of using neuroplasticity went to a support forum and were told to shut up and that they couldn't actually share that. It's really, this, is, this current situation is not a good reflection on the MECFS world. We need to be able to ask questions. We need to be able to debate. We need to be able to share our experience. And we should not have anything off the table from a scientific perspective. So that's it for this video, a more controversial one. But I look forward to your thoughts, uh, your debates down below on this topic. And I will see you in the next one.